All right, y'all, what's up? It's your boy, Rick Mohammed, Brawler Sports Media. I'm live here in Manhattan, and uh, I'm kicking it with my man here. I got a young fighter, up-and-coming prospect. So brawlers don't just interview and reach out for the, for the superstars that's already at the pinnacle of their careers. We want to build fighters as well. And I'm standing here today with my main man, uh, Mr. Penn Pennington here, and he is uh, Kingpin Pennington. What's your, what, give me your full name. Courtney Kingpin Pennington. Courtney Kingpin Pennington. Uh, he fights in the super welterweight division. Now, Courtney's fighting coming up March 16th on Joe DeGuardia's card. He's the CEO of Star Boxing Promotions. If, for those of you who don't know, Joe DeGuardia has been around for a long time. Uh, he's helped put fighters on the map uh, for 26 years. He started uh, Star Boxing Inc. back in 1992. Also, Joe DeGuardia, what makes him so unique for these guys and being their promoter, he's a lawyer. He also was the New York State Golden Glove champion himself, uh, 147 in the open division. So they got the best of all those worlds. You got a lawyer, a uh, former fighter, and their promoter. So he knows exactly where to take these guys, when to elevate them, how to protect them, how to carry them uh, as they should be turning pro. So my man here, uh, the champ, he's fighting March 16th. Had a mediocre career as an amateur, 25 amateur fights, finished at 18 and 7 in 2012. He turned pro in August of 2012. He's coming off of three good wins uh, with Boyd Melson, who was 15, 1 and 1 at the time, correct? Right, correct, correct. So he TKO'd this guy in the seventh round, if you will. Uh, he was a southpaw. And then three months after that, Come uh, May 2017, he fights Kyrie Gray uh, for an eight-round unanimous decision that won him uh, the UBF. That's the Universal uh, Boxing Federation Belt International Super Welterweight title with an eight-round uh, impressive decision over Kyrie Gray. Uh, and then his last fight was uh, against uh, Delvin Rodriguez. Delvin Rodriguez was 29-8-4. And he might have put the nail in the coffin to end his career, and he won an impressive 10-round unanimous decision uh, right there. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let my man Cornelius uh, Kingpin Pennington speak to you guys, and we're gonna we're gonna ask him now. He's fighting Stephen Stephen Hitman Martinez March 16th at the Paramount Star Boxing Promotions. That's in Huntington, New York. Uh, that's a 10-rounder. That's an eight-rounder. That's an eight-rounder. So he's fighting an eight-rounder. Uh, Kingpin had 120 amateur fights, had uh, 103 of those were wins, 17 losses. He got the name Hitman because he has a 62% knockout ratio. Now, with that being said, the illustrious uh, uh, career he's had as an amateur, uh, the fact that he's got all these knockouts, is, is there a concern with you going into this fight, and how well have you prepared to train to face uh, the Hitman? Oh, well, you know, I'm I'm not worried about any knockout ratio. Um, you know, I treat I treat him just as any other opponent. You know, I don't sleep on anybody, right. whether the biggest hitter or uh, feather fisted. Right. You know, um, we we train we train uh, you know uh, very uh, technical tech the technicals fundamentals. Uh, so I'm not worried about that. I'm a defensive fighter, and he won't be able to hit me much. Defensive fighter, and 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 now also with that being said. Now he is uh, his record. His current record is what? 18 wins three and three losses. Okay, and he got 13 of those by knockout. That's why he's got that 62 percent knockout ratio. So now, where do you plan on going from here? What What do you What do you feel like uh, Joe DeGuardia's guidance and vision would be uh, for the for the Kingpin Pennington after this W that you get March 16th? Well, you know, I want to. I want to take baby steps. You know, um, I think if you have, like, a, a tangible goal, um, it would be uh, realistic for you to get to. So um, I think, you know, I would like to get in the, uh, the top 20 worldwide first. You know, I think, um, and, like, I'm, I'm in the top 50 right now. Um, I think this one would catapult me up even further and uh, to fighting bigger and bigger names. Um, once I'm in that uh, top 20, then I can start um, contending for, like, uh, you know, top 10, top 5, and eventually world titles, hopefully by the end of the year. You know. That's what's up. And and with that being said, you know, uh, Joe, Joe, Joe has a vision for all of you guys. So just, just 
just just roll with him because he know exactly where you're headed. Uh, you know, you and you trust him. You guys have, have built a rapport, a working relationship. You've been with him four years, correct? Right, right, four years. Joe is a stand-up guy, and uh, yeah. Joe. Ron Katz. Ron Katz, uh, that's kind of like the liaison between uh, me and Joe. Ron Katz, that's my man Ron Katz. He used to work for Top Rank. He's the matchmaker for Joe, right? Yeah. What's up, Ron? Uh, so, yeah, you know, moving forward, like you say, you want to take baby steps. And, and, and Joe know exactly what that consists of, building a fighter. He's not going to throw you to the lion's den until you're ready. Right. Then you're going to get that test fight. But you do have a tough division, with that being said, in, in that super welterweight division, should you stay there. Uh, Eris Landy, you got Jamil Charlo, uh, you know, you got Hurt. These are all big hitters. You got an up-and-coming kid named Castano. I think he's 14 and 0, but uh, those other three that I named, uh, they're they're the the big top guys. How do you think you fare in that weight class? Should you stay here at this 154? I think I'm only getting better and better. You know, uh, as you uh, spoke of before, I didn't have a, a long uh, amateur career, so I've I've been learning as I, as I've been going. I've, I've I'm learning um, in the pros. So um, as I'm learning on the job, I'm getting better and better with each fight. So um, and to see where I've come, you know, how, how far I've come thus far, and I didn't even arrive yet, you know, I, I could only imagine where I'll be when I fight uh, people like that. I, th I think, uh, you know, it'll be very impressive. It'll be great fights, you know. I'll start putting people down and even more impressive showings. Absolutely. Being, being a hometown favorite. And here's the thing. Uh, his opponent that he's fighting March 16th at the Paramount uh, is from the Bronx. And as you know, my man Kingpin Pennington, he's from Brooklyn. So it's the Bronx versus the Brooklyn, kind of like the old World Series they had back in the day. It was the Mets and the Yanks, you know, Subway Series. So we got the Boxing Subway Series, and this is called uh, Rockin' Fights Number 30. Rockin' Fights Number 30 is the 30th show that Joe DeGuardia has put on. Uh, and what, what else can you say about Joe DeGuardia? He's awesome. Uh, he's been around a long time. He's probably one of the most loyal guys, promoters still in the business that you can trust that really truly cares about fighters uh, and about taking their careers to the next level. Uh, there's nothing crooked about uh, Joe DeGuardia, scholar and a gentleman. Ain't that right, Joe? So with that being said, what can we expect from Kingpin Pennington on March 16th? Uh, I mean, you don't want to put it all out there, but how has camp been? Uh, have you prepared any differently for this fight than you did for your last fight against Delvin? And, and what, can, what can your fans just expect from you? Okay, well, we definitely prepared differently. We, we, we train um, – our training camps is uh, catered specific to each fighter. So um, although, although Martinez is a long and rangy guy, you know, he tends to not use his jab like that. He likes to, he likes to bring the fight to you, likes to fight on the inside. Um, so we're, we're going we're gonna to exploit that. We're going to move our feet. Are we gonna we're gonna um invite him walking in. That that should be a disadvantage for him at six feet tall and an advantage for you. Uh keep in mind the shorter guy wins on the inside. So with that being said, uh now you're ranked fifty three out of about thirteen hundred and something other fighters. Not bad. So that means you're definitely you're getting there right where you need to be before you get in the top ten and start to get ranked by the, the bigger sanctions, IBF. Uh, WBA, WBC, WBO, and so on and so forth. Now, I heard you say uh, by the end of this year, 2018, that you should be uh, ready to catapult uh, your career to the next level. God, God willing, you know. Um, of course, uh, you have there's a lot of politics in boxing and everything that can that can stunt careers and everything. But you know, I'm just gonna continue to do my job. And um, I know Joe DeGuardia is going to do his job. And uh, hopefully we can work together to meet that goal. You know, that's what I can hope for. Just do my part. Absolutely. This is your boy, Rick Mohammed. This is my man, Kingpin Pennington from Brooklyn. Give it up. He's going to be in the house. I'm here for the Deontay Wilder Ortiz fight. He'll be in the building as well. I'm headed to the weigh-in here in just a bit. And I plan on bringing you guys some more footage. Rick Mohammed, Brawler Sports Media Live here in Manhattan. Uh, for the big Wild Ortiz fight. But for the main thing, my man here came down to check me out. Let me do an interview on him. I appreciate you for coming, champ. I appreciate you for having me, brother. Much love. Good luck to you. All right. Thank you, boss. All right. Brawler Sports Media, we out.